please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEX scholarships 2020. There are two mathematics exams. This problem is from the 2020 Mathematics B questionnaire. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. The problem goes like this. Let A and B be real numbers with B greater than or equal to zero. When the equation x to the fourth plus ax squared plus b equals zero has exactly two real solutions, the minimum value of a plus 2b is blank and the maximum value of the ceiling of a minus b is blank. Here, the ceiling of r denotes the smallest integer that is larger than or equal to the real number r. For this problem, it's not immediately obvious how we are going to go and tackle the solution. So it is always helpful for these kinds of problems to write down first what we know, and that will help us find a probable possible path towards the solution. So again, let's write down the things that we know. First, we know that b should be greater than or equal to zero. In other words, b must be non-negative, and we know this from the problem statement. We also know that this equation here has exactly two real solutions. And this language means that this equation here has exactly two solutions and that both of them are real. So normally, for a for an equation of degree four, we would have four solutions. We would have four roots of this left hand side. But for this case, in this case, the problem states that there are exactly two solutions and that those solutions are real numbers. And so what that means is that some of the solutions, one at least one of them, repeats, has a multiplicity that is greater than one. The third bit is knowable from the equation that's given. So if we think of this equation as a quadratic equation, quadratic in x squared, then we can solve x squared using the quadratic formula. If you remember, that that is simply x squared that is the variable so here think of x squared as the variable here so that's x here we have x squared squared here we have a x squared and here we have b and so from the quadratic formula we get x squared equals the negative of the coefficient here so that's negative a plus minus the square root of the square of the coefficient here and so that's a squared minus four times the coefficient here, which is just one, times the coefficient here, which is b, and, and that's why we get this term here. And now take all of these and divide it by two times the coefficient here, which is just one. And so we get this expression for x squared. Now, we can get the expression for x from three, and so, we just get the square root of both sides, and now we obtain the value for x as the plus, the positive or negative of this, of the square root of this entire expression. And notice that this is the general form of the solution of this, of this equation here. And we have four, in fact, we have one, two here, and then again, the positive and the negative of each of those. So we have four solutions here if we're looking at this one here. Now we said that this expression here tells us there are four solutions, right? Plus minus here and the plus minus the positive and negative of the square root of those, of each of those. And that leads us to thinking about the condition two here because it says two real solutions and so we want to make this into just actually two solutions and how do we do that so think about what the possible values of the discriminant here 
r. So a squared minus 4b. a squared minus 4b, if, if it is negative, then what we have is, a neg is, is the square root of a negative number. And that means it's a complex number. Now, if it's a complex number, the square root of that would also be a complex number. And so we will be violating this second condition that says that the solutions are real solutions. And so this expression here cannot be negative. Now, what if it's positive? So if, th if this expression here is positive, then we have a real square root. And so that we have a positive of that real square root and a negative of that real square root. And now we, we have to take the positive and the negative of the entire thing. And that means we will have four solutions. The, pos the square root of the positive square root here. So we get plus and minus of that. And then we, get, we also get the plus and minus of the square root when this is negative here. So four solutions are there. And again, that's in violation of this second condition. So a negative value for this is not possible. A positive value of this is also not possible. And so we're left with the value here that is zero, because if this is zero, then this bit here is gone and we are just left with plus minus the square root of negative a over two. And so, we use that condition, a squared minus 4b must be zero. And now we can get a relationship between a and b. And that is that a equals the positive or negative square root of b times two. And we go further. Now we know that for a squared minus 4b must be zero. Then we can just substitute zero here and we obtain x equals the positive or negative of the square root of negative a over two. And furthermore, just from this, we also know that a must be a negative number. Why? Because if a were zero, that means that x equals zero. But we are told that x should have two solutions and therefore a cannot be zero, right? Because if, if a were just zero, then we only have one solution. And also a cannot be positive because if a is positive, then negative a is negative. And now we're going to get the square root of a negative number. And now we will have complex solutions. And therefore, we will be violating again this condition too. And so a could only be negative because the negative of a negative number is positive. And so we don't have a problem getting the square root of that. But now that we know that a must be negative, we will also have a new, a, a known value for a here. That means a must be the negative square root of b times two, because we know that a is negative. And so the positive branch of this can now be ignored. Now we add the condition that we just found. So here we add, we added number five, which is a equals the negative of two times square root of b. And this must be less than zero. And also because we, we already know the value of this to be zero here, we added this. We now know that x is the negative of the square root of negative a over two. But now we might be ready to start looking at what we're looking for. So we're looking for the minimum, for the first half is looking for the minimum of a plus 2b. And if you look at this fifth condition here, if we actually add 2b to both sides, it looks like we might be able to get something. So let's do that. For convenience, let us first define a variable m and let this be the minimum of a plus 2b. In other words, we're looking for m. And now, if we first look at a plus 2b, we can use 5 and we add 2b to both sides, we get this. And this is starting to look like the expression of a parabola where this 
left side here is y and square root of b is the x. And so if we just try to complete this square, well, before that, let's try to factor out the 2 here. So we get this. Then we complete the square inside. And so we add 1 fourth and subtract 1 fourth so that that does not change the value of this expression. And now we know that these first three terms, these terms comprise a perfect square. And so we, we, fact, we, we move this out of the quantity symbol. And so we get 2 times the perfect square here. That is from this bit here. And moving this outside, we get 2 times negative 1 fourth. And so we get negative 1 half out there. And then we notice that, in fact, this looks like a parabola. And that's a parabola with a positive coefficient. And so that's, that opens upwards, right? Like that. And also for this parabola, we know that the vertex would be one half and the minimum is negative one half and that's from here therefore and also for this parabola we know that the horizontal axis is the square root of b that's this one and the vertical axis is the left hand side which is a plus 2b so we can now know the minimum value of a plus 2b. In other words, we can now know m. And that is at this vertex. And that is negative 1 half, this bit here. And if that's negative 1 half, we, all, we can also know what is b. So b is, so we start with the square root of b, which is negative, uh, which is positive 1 half. And so if we square that, we get b, which is 1 fourth. And then we can now get a by using number 5 here. So it's negative 2 times the square root of b. And the square root of b, again, is, is just 1 half. So negative 2 times 1 half is negative 1. And so that's a. And we still have to make sure that these things, that these values we obtained, do not in any way contradict any of the conditions here. Now, if you look at B, it's, it's one fourth, so it's okay. If you look at A, that's negative, and so this is also okay, and so this is also okay. Now, the next part is to check. Check the values of X that we obtain, and we try to substitute it in the, in the equation and see if it satisfies the equation. So let's do that here. So we, we start with this bit, which is what we had from, from the previous slide. Then we use 4 because this is uh, where we can find the actual x values, the solutions. And so we get, if we plug in these values here, we get x equals plus minus the square root of 1 half. And if we plug in this value of x, to the given equation, the equation the equation should check out. Okay, and true enough, you get zero on this side because this is square root of one half, and then you square it. That's one half, and you square it again, so that's one fourth. So one fourth plus one fourth, you get one half, and here you have square root of one half. Here you have square root of one half squared, so that's one half already. So negative one half, and you have one fourth minus one half plus one fourth. So that's a zero on the other side. And so it looks like that this solution does check out. And so we can say that the minimum of a plus two b, that is our lowercase m, is in fact negative one half. So that's our answer. Now let's think of the second half of the problem. So again, like what we did for the first half, we're going to use this condition here. And what we're going to do, because we're looking at a minus b out here, we're going to subtract b from both sides of the equation of, of the equation here at number five. And so before we do that, let's first define m to be the maximum 
of a minus b. And we notice that m here is not what we're looking for because here we have a maximum of the ceiling of a minus b. So that's what we're looking for ultimately. But here in the solution, we'll first look at the maximum of just a minus b. And we define that to be m. So again, we use 5 and we subtract b from both sides and we get this. And again, this looks like a parabola to me. And so we factor out the negative bit. And now here, we just need to add 1 here to complete this square. So that looks like this. And this first part here is a complete, is a perfect square. And so we obtain this. Again, this is a parabola in square root of b. And so this time, this is actually opening downwards, right? Because the neg there is a negative sign in here. And for this kind of parabola, we know that what this means is that the vertex is at negative 1 and that the maximum value is 1. So we'll be tempted to say that, in fact, m here could be this 1. However, we have a we, we, we're going to check again and, and see if it's consistent with all the other conditions that we have here. And so, if m equals 1, and therefore the square root of b is negative 1 at that bit, right? Here. So it's negative 1. Now, that already looks like it's a problem because the square, the principal root of b should be positive. But let's go on. How do we obtain b? So we square both sides of this, this and this, and we obtain b out here. And we see that b equals 1. And that's not a problem because it's consistent with this uh, condition here in number 1. And then if we use that and use number 5 here, we see that a equals 2. But wait a minute. 2 is not greater is not less than zero right so the way we obtain two is we substitute for square root of b we substitute negative one there so negative one here goes to negative one here square root of b so negative two times negative one is positive two and that's how we got a equals two but again this is greater than zero it's not consistent with number five here because this should be less than zero and in fact you will see that if you substitute it here, you will see that you will get a complex number for x. And again, that's not consistent with 2. So we need to draw and see what's going on. So let's try to draw this parabola that we had here. Here we just draw the parabola that we got from the previous slide. And this is what we get. And just as expected, the vertex is at negative 1, 1. And if we recall, we were testing if m, if the maximum of a minus b is in fact 1. And it would have been if we considered the entire parabola. However, if it were 1, then the square root of b will be negative 1, this bit here. And so the value of b would be positive 1. And your a, and our a here is equal to the negative of 2 times the square root of b, which is negative 1. And so we get 2, which is greater than 0. However, we have established that a must be negative, must be less than 0. And the way to do that is to have b positive. Because if b is 0, imagine if b is, if is 0, then a would be 0. So that's in violation of condition 5. Because condition 5 says a should be less than 0. A should be negative and the same is true if B were positive or rather were B, if B were negative or imagine if B were negative just like here where B is negative 1 when you multiply that with negative 2 what you get is a positive number just like this and that's greater than 0 and again that's in violation of condition 5 because a according to condition 5 must be less and not greater than zero. So condition five says it should be 
less than zero a and again that means that our b here square root of b must be in fact square root of b must be greater than zero okay and what that means for a plot is that this bit here all this bit from here to here including at zero these are all not viable options for our b and so we don't want that we don't want this portion of the graph that's colored purple that's not part of the solution because that's where b is in fact less than zero like this bit when in fact according to condition five we, we need b or square root of b greater than zero it's only this bit and just by looking at this graph we see immediately that the maximum of this the maximum value could be here right but zero zero is not part of the solution right because we want a and square root of b to be greater than zero it cannot be zero zero so it's somewhere just above zero zero okay and so if you get the ceiling function the ceiling function again means just to round up whatever you got so if you have something here for example that would be near zero maybe point 0.1 if you round that or rather negative point 0.1 because we're, we're looking at uh, a minus b here if you just apply a ceiling function it's gonna go to the closest integer above it so it's gonna go to zero so we can say that there's no maximum because again zero zero is not included and we, we can say that a minus b is definitely less than zero it's here below, below this this axis here and so if it's less than zero how you can make it as close to zero as long as it's below zero and if you get the ceiling function of that you're going to round it up to zero okay any value here between negative one and zero if you round it up if you get the ceiling function that's rounding it up you round it up to zero and of course the maximum of that would be just zero as well now let's derive analytically what we've shown graphically in the previous slide so we start with the first condition here which is b is greater than or equal to zero and then notice that we're after a minus b and so we'll need a negative sign here and we do that by multiplying both sides by negative one and we obtain this inequality here we just flip the inequality and we get a negative here and now we just need to add a to both sides and we obtain this and notice that we have an additional inequality here which says a is less than zero and this is just from the fifth condition here it asserts that a must be a negative number and so a minus b must be a negative number it cannot be zero it cannot be greater than zero it has to be a negative number and if we write that in terms of b again we just replaced a here with the value here in terms of b we just put it here and it tells us the same thing that a minus b must be a negative number and what that means is that we we cannot have a maximum because a minus b can be brought as close to zero as we want it could be negative point one it could be negative point zero one it can be negative point then a million zeros then one but it can never be zero so strictly speaking we do not have a maximum for a minus b now even if we do not have a single maximum for a minus b what we can say though is that the largest values that are permissible for a minus b would have to fall in the following range it should be greater than negative one but less than zero right so these are the largest possible values now what we can do is we can actually take the ceiling function because the ceiling function is like a round up function so you take a number you round it up to the closest integer and so if you round up zero that would still be zero that's the closest integer now if you have a number any number that falls between negative one and zero 
how would you round it up? So it would it would have to be the next integer that's that's above it, that's greater than it. And so if you round up a number, any number between negative one and zero, that would be just zero, right? And so that's why we can say that the the ceiling function of a minus b is zero. And because the largest values of a minus b fall in this range, we know that the maximum of those rounded up values would also be zero, right? Because if you have, for example, another value that's less than negative one, then when you round it up, that will be negative one. And negative one is certainly less than zero. And that's why we can say that the maximum of the ceiling function, again, the ceiling function is the round up function, round it up to the next integer. The maximum of that would have to be zero because of this. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!